Hello the boys and girls and welcome back to this brand new video. In this tutorial we're gonna learn more about the canvas tutorial. In the last tutorial we created just a little bit of simple rectangles and a little bit of single circles and yeah that's easy to do and in this tutorial series we're gonna go deeper right now into the materials of the canvas. Alright in this tutorial series we're gonna create more dynamic rectangles and circles and we need to create them by adding a class and adding objects into our files. Alright, well, let's begin. First things first, we got our canvas here right now with a yellow background and the width and height of the whole window. We included the canvas into our HTML file and now let's begin by just creating, let's say, a class. Um, we call this class circle and of course every class need a constructor and we can say that we need of course a draw function all right um yeah that's what we need right now for the for the beginning so let's begin with the constructor and in the constructor we're gonna say that we need um let's say something like x position y position um the radius for example and of course we need let's say the color all right that's what we need in the constructor and what the constructor does he just put this information to global variables so let's say this dot um let's say something like xpos is equal to xpos and of course we can say this dot ypos is equal to ypos and we're gonna say this dot radius is equal to radius and this dot color is equal to color so this variable and this variable and this variable will be set to the and we made a mistake here circle circle so now we got it uh will be put to club variables here right now that's what we need here and let's go to the draw function and into the draw function we're just gonna put in um, we need of course here the context as argument and as argument and now we're gonna just say context like in the first tutorial context dot begin path um, we just gonna say first things first context dot arc we're gonna draw a circle here and we're gonna of course say this dot x position and we're gonna say x dot y position and we're gonna say this dot radius and let's say something again like zero and i don't know math pi multiplied with two and of course we can at least say false but that's not very important the last Fault is not very really important. And we're gonna say context dot stroke. Okay, so we're gonna say let my circle is equal to new and we circle the name of the class. And now we can put in some variables. As you can see, that's the variables we declared here. It's called x post, y post, radius, and color. And first things first, we're gonna just say something like 100, 100, uh, radius of just five, no bigger, and we're gonna make it black, okay? So nothing will happen now because we have to call the function. So we're gonna say my circle. And now with the dot element, we can use the functions and objects into the circle class. And we're gonna, of course, just say, draw and what we need is the context the context we declared here all right so if we save this as you can see we got a new circle and of course you can put every single variable in the constructor you want to create dynamically and of course you have to call them here in the constructor so for example you can say um, the line width or you can say something like i don't know um text into the which should be standing into the circle or something like this 
but for, for this tutorial series, we will keep this here right now. So to style this, you can just go into the draw function and you can say context um, and something like dot line width or things like that. And you can put it to, let's say five. So it's a little bit bigger here right now. Okay, really simple to do. And of course you have, I forget it, you have to context.close path in the end of the draw function. All right, that's all you can do right now to create classes and to create objects. And of course you can create more objects here. So you can say, let my circle two, and you can say my circle dot draw and context here. And of course my circle two dot draw. And you will not see a difference because it is at the same position. So let's change the positions. And now you have a second circle. All right, and of course we can, can generate them dynamically with simple and easy for loops. So all you have to do is you need to create an array. Um, we call this all circles. Um, first things first, it's an empty array. And what we need to do now is we're gonna say four, and let's say something like numbers, and start with zero. And it's like an index number here. And we're gonna say numbers smaller than 10. So it will take 10 loops here. And at least we're gonna say numbers plus plus. And what we do then, we're gonna say all circles. Now for, first things first, we're gonna create a new circle. So let's copy this. We don't need this right now. And we're gonna say all circles dot push and push just put this created circle into the area at the next empty position. So if it's empty, the next position will be zero because the index always starts with zero. And we're gonna push the circle. And now we're gonna create a function. Um, we're gonna call this create circle or draw circle, whatever. So equal to function. And what we need is a circle. And for that, we're just gonna say, circle, the argument, dot draw. All right, so we push it. And now we're gonna just say create a circle. And we take the array at position number numbers, right? So this should work. And now we're gonna create some random variables because you, they all have the same X and Y position. So you can only see one circle here. So let's take it simple. And let's gonna say that random X is equal to math.random multiplied with window with, for example. Let's take it simple. And of course we can replace this and we only see one circle. So, all right, so let's lock all circles here. I locked out all the circles and as you can see, we got an area with 10 circles and they, but now they all have, of course, the same X position and the same Y position. That's, of course, we need to generate the random X in the for loop and let's do the same with the Y and let's replace this. And now you got random circles let's re replace this and as you can see now we generated 10 random circles at random positions um really simple and really easy to do right so i will take this lock out yeah really simple and really easy to do right i hope you guys like this video in the next video i'm going to show you how to let the circle move so to change the x and y position automatically so that the circles will move around the window and and the next tutorial series i'm going to show you the collision detection as well so that they will plop to the rat to the corners and to other circles and of course i'm going to show you some more things about canvas how to create more than just one 
objects or circles and rectangles at the same time. See you in the next video. I hope you guys liked it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up. See you in the next video. Bye.